it is very difficult for so many of us to believe that God could forgive anything and everything that we have done. So, so often in hearing confessions, people will come and they will confess the same thing that they have already confessed before. And they've already received absolution for their past actions. And yet, so often people will confess what they have done and they will say, I just want to confess it again, even though I've already confessed it, because it bothers me. I keep dwelling on this. I keep thinking about it. I keep thinking about the fact that I have had an abortion and so I want to confess it again. I keep thinking about the fact that I've cheated on my husband or on my wife. I keep thinking about the fact that I wasn't a model parent or about all the mistakes that I have done as a parent. And you keep reliving your past sins your past mistakes. And the Bible makes it very clear that we are to only worship God and God alone. Part of the Ten Commandments, the very first commandment is, you shall only worship the Lord your God and Him alone. We are to only worship God and adore God. Adoring something else or worshiping something else is idolatry. And when you dwell on what you have done, when you keep replaying the cassette of your past issues, your past sins, things that you have done, you are not worshiping and adoring the God who so loved you that He gave His life for you, you are not worshiping the God who forgives you for anything and everything that you may have done in those words of absolution, but you are worshiping your sin. Your sin has become your God. The fact that you've cheated or had an abortion or were not the model parent that you were, all the mistakes that you've done, that is your God. Not the God that we have been hearing about, particularly from this gospel, which we are all familiar with. The God who died for you who died for all of your sins, all of your mistakes. And so, in this time of renewal during the pilgrimage, we have to recommit ourselves, all of us here. Yeah, we all have made mistakes. We all have done bad things, terrible things in the past. But I worship the God who died for all of those things. And, and any time that the devil wants to replay the cassette in my head of the things that I've done, I'm going to replace all those thoughts every time the devil comes in and says, hey, don't you remember what you've done? You know, don't you remember you went to that clinic or the fact that you uh, cheated or, you know, all, and, and keeps replaying, you know, what you did to your children or, you know, uh, you're going to replace all those thoughts and say, no, I have been forgiven and you're going to remember the day when you walked into that confessional or when you sat down with the priest and you confessed and, and the priest who takes the place of Jesus in that moment said those powerful words, I absolve you of all of your sins. That's all of your sins. From that time on, all of the sins have been forgiven. You are forgiven. I worship a God who forgives any sin. One of the uh, hardest things for me 
uh, uh, as a priest is to deal with people who do not feel like they are redeemable because of what they have done. All of us are redeemable because God loves each and every one of us. Each of us. I often remember the story of Clara Barton, the founder of the International Red Cross. And Clara Barton illustrates for us so very well what we should all internalize in our life, the forgiveness of God. And Clara Barton had something very terrible happen to her in her life. Her husband cheated on her, and he didn't just cheat on her, but uh, he cheated on her with her best friend. Can you imagine that? A double whammy. And after a while, Clara took him back. And of course, you know, all the people in the neighborhood started talking. And they started saying, Clara, don't you remember? Don't you remember what he did to you? And not only that, Clara would go out with her best friend as well. She started going out with her again. And all the people, don't you remember what she did? And Clara looked at all the people, you know, the one who, and she'd say, no, I don't remember what he did. I don't remember what she did. But I remember the moment in which I decided to forgive him. The moment in which I decided to forgive her. And that's how we have to live our life. Remember the moment of forgiveness, not the moment of the mistake. God does not have a memory. You do. That's why you remember everything your husband did or everything your, your wife did or your kids did. You know, you remember. God doesn't. God has no memory. Absolutely no memory. Last Sunday was a most powerful Sunday. We celebrated Divine Mercy Sunday. You know that picture of Jesus, the Divine Mercy, that says, Jesus, I trust in you? That picture comes from Poland. Okay? Jesus appeared to a Polish nun, St. Faustina Kowalska. And he would be appearing to her, and she had visions of him, and they would be uh, having conversations. And in one of the visions that St. Faustina had, Jesus says, well, go tell the priest about me appearing to you. And you know how it is, you know, if uh, somebody comes to me and says, you know, I mean, I have visions of Jesus, uh, my usual response is, well, here's a list of the local psychiatrists uh, that may be able to help you. And so the priest was, of course, very suspect and skeptical. And in order to believe her, he told her, he said, Well, ask Jesus what I told him in my last confession. And then I will believe that he is appearing to you. So Faustina goes to Jesus. Next time he appears and says, Jesus, you know, he wanted to know what he told you in the last confession. Because you know when we confess our sins to the priest, we're confessing to Jesus. Because the priest, the sacrament is Jesus Christ. He wants to know what he told you in his last confession. And you know what Jesus told Faustina? Jesus says to St. Faustina, Tell the priest that I do not remember. Tell him that I do not remember. God does not remember. 
God doesn't remember what you did. God has no memory. And during this time of renewal that we are having, ask yourself this. If God doesn't remember what I did, why do I? If a God doesn't remember, why should I focus on what I did? And then, if God doesn't remember, God doesn't hold what I did against me, why do I continue to hold what others have done to me against them?